Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I painted the Von Ryan's Leapers. Some models that when I saw these in the box set, I instantly fell in love with them and thought these are going to be fantastic to paint. And indeed they were. And the paint seems going to be very similar to the Tyranids I painted on the channel before, but with a couple of little differences to sort of reflect the fact that these are different, kind of more characterful, more interesting models. And I think when you go larger in scale in these Tyranid models, you've got to do something a little bit different because my normal uh, Termagant paint scheme it was really simple and all about speed paint. Now this is a speed paint. This was a very, very quick paint scheme to do, but just with a couple of little touches that make them stand out from the standard sort of foot troopers. Now we start off with the paint scheme exactly the same in that I've sprayed them black and then I've sprayed them with a desert yellow spray paint kind of from over 45 degrees. So there are some areas where the black shows through and then we're starting off in a dry brush style. So I'm dry brushing the entire model in bone white first, a relatively heavy dry brush but you don't want to get you know into all the gaps and cracks and things uh, so this is a technique and I've done this on all the videos of the Turing so far and people have asked how heavy are you going? So here's on the right a model that's just got the spray, on the left this is after the first stage of bone white dry brush so that might give you an idea about how heavy we're actually going and that dry brush wants to go all over the model and onto the base and as a point to note obviously it depends how you do your base but I've put some skulls and things over my base so I've painted those directly with the bone white first not a dry brush to pick out the skull detail so now after the bone white is dry we're doing a, another dry brush but this time with an off-white and what we're doing here is we're building up layers of the kind of white color to give the texture and the interest because the, this paint scheme is a vast majority a contrast color scheme so we're building up to give those layers and again just a comparison so the model on the left has had the bone white dry brush and then the off-white dry brush the one on the right has now just had the bone white to show you the sort of stages you're going for and how much you want to put on now we're not going for a pure contrast paint scheme because I think like, it's a little bit too vibrant for my taste on the models. So I'm washing the entire model now with Seraphim Sepia, great paint from Games Workshop. And again, up to this stage, this is identical to what I've done for all the smaller Tyranids. Uh, and really does this just sort of dulls down the, the real bright whites that are on there, puts a bit of that kind of dirty 40k grimdark on there without going too dark, which I do on some of my schemes, go really dark and gritty. This was somewhere in between. And this is what separates this paint scheme from being a normal kind of contrast paint scheme also separates it from being a sort of slap chop scheme because we're doing this wash stage in the middle now you do need to leave this for a good few hours to dry i left mine overnight before we start what is the very fast part of this scheme which is the contrast paint now it doesn't matter which order you're going to do these paints in i get asked that a few times why i pick a particular order uh, and really with these there, there's no set order i do them i just happen to like painting in this order and it's nice to have a formula when you do batch painting or speed painting uh, so i followed the same order with all models so starting off with basilicanum gray and this is all the teeth the claws the hooves all the kind of solid weapon parts if that makes any sense um across the whole model and there's a lot of them on this model you see here some really impressive kind of top claws now you'll notice here i'm spreading this basilicanum gray right onto what looks like the carapace panels which i'll be doing purple later on there's a reason for that i want to do something slightly different with these von ryan leapers they want meant to be sort of slightly stealthy and whatever so i thought be more interesting to make it not camouflage because the colors are far too vibrant but almost a blending of the colors across the model so i put the basilicanum gray all the way down onto the armor panels as well and then i took the shyish purple which is the color i'm using to represent leviathan and put that on top as you can see here of that basilicanum gray across all of the large talons that are coming out of the shoulders and that blends it together really nicely and makes a merge of almost the gray and the purple as we're going so that's a, something a little bit different i did on this larger model now i wouldn't do that necessarily on a small like a turban or whatever you've seen in a channel before or some of the smaller models because the, the effect doesn't really pop too much when it goes a small model but i think that's important when you're doing a larger model like this to do something slightly different than what you've done before so cleaning the brush out so we don't get any of that mix onto the brush and take it anywhere else you don't want it and going with the shyish purple onto the armor panels across the head as you see in here and then all over the panels across the body and there are still quite a few armor panels even though this is meant to be kind of a stealthy sort of lictor type variant model um, it is still thoroughly armored so you know you've got a fair bit to go at and just when you i found watch out when you're going underneath some of these claws and things that you're not catching the backs of the arms and stuff and if you do get it quickly washed off again because this is a pale color scheme you've put on i think some people think the contrast paint you can just go for it and be a bit messy you can't you've got to be really careful because it's quite hard to cover this up if you don't know if you've done it uh, if you put it in a place where you're meant to keep the pale skin 
So, moving on onto the piece, we're going to volupus pink now, and we're putting this into all the fleshy parts. So, there's quite a lot of joints you can see here where the, the legs are articulated in the different fashions, and I've chosen to do those kind of joint areas in this volupus pink. Looks quite different, adds a pop of colour to the model, also gives your enemy somewhere to aim the chainsaw at if you're fighting space marines and things, because that's obviously the fleshy, weak part but it just adds a bit of vibrancy to the model without going kind of too far. So in all the cracks and joints and things, and also this is another variance to the small models, you've got a large area kind of where the joint articulates that I've chosen to put that in there as well. Um, so it is adding a bit more color than some of the smaller models, even though this is a sort of stealthy lictor variant model, but I think it's definitely worth doing. Now, I will come back to this color later on because when I was painting this model, I kind of, decided on some steps and thought, right, that's fine, I'm finished, I'm done, and then moved on as I chose to do something else, which is fine when you're doing a model, you can start off with a plan and adapt to that kind of thing as you're going. So taking that same volupus pink and putting it into the kind of eyeball sections, I'm also putting it onto the bottom part of these tentacles that are coming out of the mouth. You'll see that I'm not putting it into the sort of area that directly joins the mouth completely, just touching into there, but mostly pulling this down into the tentacle area because we're gonna use the next color at the top of that mouth. So moving on, this is the Majos purple that we're gonna use really for the weapons later on. But we are putting it at the very top of the mouth area uh, around where this kind of comes out of the jaws. I've chosen the two very, very similar colors. So, you know, your Majos purple, your tentacle pink are very, very close in color, but they're just far apart enough that obviously Games Workshop was on two different paints for them, but it gives you a sort of blended look to the model when you're coming out of that mouth area. I'm also dropping this Majos Purple into the cracks in the legs because that's kind of, I think, weapons. So the Majos Purple represents stuff that's more weapony. Um, the Volupus Pink is representing areas that might be a little bit more vulnerable on the model. And you might want to split the model off like that. You may not want to. You could definitely save some time and some money by just doing both of these sets of parts with either Majos Purple or Volupus Pink. And it wouldn't make a massive difference because the tones are fairly similar. On a camera, they look virtually identical. They're not in real life. There are some variations. And I decided at this point to take the Majos Purple down the kind of arms, if you want to call it, or the upper arms of the kind of top talons because I wanted them to look a bit more weapony but also a bit more vibrant. So I'm taking this Majos Purple, running it on the undersurface where I was going to leave the kind of pale flesh, running into the um, joints where I've got the pink on that. To, on the kind of articulation areas there and it makes it look a bit more vicious a bit more weapony but I also didn't get it very uh, clear on the camera shot and that is the model complete so a fairly quick simple color scheme but I think it gives a real uh, impact especially with those new vibrant areas on the back of the upper talons and things as well so I'm really happy that these came out these are fantastic models um, really great addition to the to the range kind of in that Lictor Xenotype, if that's even the word you would use. So yeah, fantastic models. Uh, nearly at the end of my Tyranid army, she got the uh, Screamer Killer and a couple of the other models to do. So keep an eye on the channel if you're liking the Tyranids and uh, there will be more coming and I'll do an army reveal when it's all finished. So yeah, definitely a project to be enjoying so far. Super quick paint schemes, but I do think impactful. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, check out my links below and I'll see you on another video.